Good morning. It is the first Sunday of Advent. Yay! And uh, we have my uh, thanks to Oliver Dean and their young house members. We are have a lot of decorations up. Thanks for doing that. And uh, we are lighting the first candle of the Advent wreath this morning. Um, also, there are some handouts that were beside the um, bulletins as you came in. Little coins, Advent coins, pocket coins that you can carry around during Advent to remind yourself of uh, Christ's child coming and the celebration of uh, Christ's birth, but also the uh, anticipation and work that we do to prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus. The uh, coin says, Star, Wonder, Star, Night, Guide Us to Not Perfect Light, and uh, the light of the world has come. So we are celebrating that. You can also grab one and put it somewhere that you would see it, if you don't want to carry it around. You may also give one to someone. So there are plenty at the back doors, and there are plenty. So if you want to take one to give to somebody, that is fine as well. So uh, Advent is here. Also, there are... Uh, Advent calendars, adult ones are over here, and the children's ones are at the north door, uh, and there are two kinds for kids, uh, plenty for everybody, so if you want something to do a daily uh, reading or uh, caring for Advent, those are available, take those, let us turn our hearts to worship God. Peace and love to the world. The first part reminds us 
that God's promises are still true for us today. Wait and hope, for Jesus Christ is coming.
house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to bring up, to spring up for David, and he will execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is Our Righteousness. Our next reading is 1 Thessalonians 3, 9 through 13. How can we thank you? How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he strengthen your hearts in the holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Our final reading is Luke 1, 67 through 79. Then John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably, favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from the old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he wore to the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we do give thanks today for all of our blessings, all of the gifts shared, all of the people gathered, and for your word open to us, your word in scripture, your word in song, your word in flesh, Jesus Christ. We thank you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It is so easy this weekend to count our blessings, to give thanks. Uh, even, even if times are tough, even if things, there are things might change in our lives or in our world, um, even if there's illness or suffering or loss or fear or some problem that you might be facing, even all of those things, today you can name your blessings. You've probably been thinking about your blessings all week long. Uh, if nothing else, I thank God for this group gathered, for this church, for this day, uh, for the time that we are able to worship, for the freedom to worship, and for all of the gifts shared, uh, for family, for friends. Our list goes on. Uh, moreover, I thank God for the awareness of all of these gifts and the awareness that we are loved by God and uh, by other people as well. We are grateful for the way God has blessed us, for the way God moves among us, speaks to us, provides for us gratitude. I hope that you have been naming your blessings all week. I hope that they come to mind easily. I hope that you've been thanking God and thanking your loved ones for uh, all that is good, all that is right in your life and our lives together. Uh, and I hope that you continue to be aware of all that is good and all that is beautiful um, in our lives and around you in the world. Uh, I saw a story not too long ago uh, about Melissa Stockwell, a soldier who lost her leg in Afghanistan. She was remarkable, and I saw the interview. In her, in her place, I probably would have been... Uh, feeling sorry for myself or complaining or something. Uh, instead, this wonderful young woman said she woke up in the hospital and next to her was someone who had lost both legs and an arm and another who had a brain injury and she immediately said, I'm so lucky. Really, she just lost a leg and she says, I'm so lucky. She was grateful to be alive. She was grateful that she could go on with her life that she could move forward. She, she became a Paralympic triathlete and a champion in the Paralympics. Um, she said, I count all I have, not what I lost. I found that remarkable. We all should learn from her. Don't look at what we don't have. Don't look at what we fear, what is wrong. Look instead at what is right. Count our blessings. Look at what is good in the world around you. God loves us. God has given us what we need for today. God has promised all will be well. Trust God. Live in the hope of God's blessing. The first theme of Advent, you can see them on the front of the table there. The first theme of Advent is hope. Hope, love, joy, peace. This year, I decided that I wanted to spend a lot more time on the theme of hope. So we're going to be exploring that theme of hope for the next three weeks, uh, throughout the season, to live in the hope of Jesus Christ, to concentrate on that hope. Because this year, I think we need hope. I think all of us are seeking the hope of Jesus Christ and ought to share that hope of Jesus Christ with others in the world. It's been a tough year, another tough year. Not the worst in history, probably not the worst in your life, but nonetheless, not the easiest year of our lives this year. There are so many challenges in our world. Uh, sometimes it seems the darkness is pressing in. We need to be reminded of our living hope in Jesus Christ. We need to remember the hope promised by prophets for long generations, the hope of the world whose birth we celebrate, 
We need to cling to that hope already realized in Jesus Christ our Savior and Savior of all. We need to, to live into that hope yet to come for all eternity. Now hope is not something tangible, not something you can point to or, or prove in any way. Hope is in itself not provable, yet hope is as real and as powerful as any force imaginable. Those who have hope are able to move forward. Hope can change lives. Hope can change our world. Further, hope is strongest when things are most difficult. When you're having challenges, that is when hope rises and shines. Hope brings light into the darkness. Hope is, is about looking to the future that we believe is better than the current circumstances. Hope is holding on to the promises that things will get better. When things do get better, it's no longer hope. It's, it's reality. Because hope has become certainty. The certainty for us is Jesus Christ. Savior of the world, Savior of each and every one of us who believe. That hope is certain. Jesus saves us from darkness, from sin, from death. Jesus empowers each of us to live each day in the presence of God. Jesus promises eternal life. Jesus Christ makes all things possible. Jesus Christ is our hope. The coming of Jesus into the world, into our lives, is what Advent is all about. The coming of hope. Jesus has come. Christ has been born to save the world. Anything is possible. Everything is promised. The season we celebrate, the hope of the world, Jesus Christ. The coming of, of the Messiah was foretold for long generations by prophets of ancient Israel in many seasons of the life of the people of faith, like the prophet Jeremiah that we heard earlier in today's reading. The Messiah was seen as a righteous king in the line of David, someone who would serve God as faithfully as David did, one who would save God's people and set the world right again. That was the hope of the Messiah. We know Jesus to be the fulfillment of that prophecy. Jesus made forgiveness possible and thereby made uh, restored humanity's relationship to God made it possible for us to be connected to God. Jesus gave us the chance to belong to God, to trust God, and to serve God now. Further, Jesus promised eternal life for everyone. To all who follow Jesus in the way of peace, the way of love. The last of the prophets in Israel was John the Baptist, forerunner of Jesus. And today's reading from the Gospel of Luke is the song that was attributed to John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, at the time of John's birth. And it expressed all the hope of all the people through all those long generations. All of the prophecy was in that one song that Zechariah sang. That God will save us from all that is dark and difficult in the world. That God has promised that... Uh, God will destroy all that destroys and pulls us, pulls us away from God. That God has promised this victory. As scripture says, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Zechariah believed in that which had not yet happened. Zechariah believed with all of his heart that it would happen because of what just happened. What had happened in his life at that moment. He had hope in the future because of the evidence in the present. His son, John, had just been born. Even though Zachariah and Elizabeth had thought they were barren and would not be having children, they were surprised and blessed by the gift of God. And because of that real reality, they believed in the hope promised in the future. Zachariah believed in the light of the world the light coming into the world because he had already experienced the presence of God and the blessing of God in his life in that moment. The hope was not fully yet realized 
But Zachariah believed with all of his heart because of the promises already realized and revealed. We today live in that same hope as Zachariah and Elizabeth and John. No, we are not in heaven yet, uh, but we believe Jesus' promise of eternal life. No, the world is far from perfect, but we believe God has a plan for salvation, and we are part of that redemption as followers of Jesus Christ. We believe because of what we have already experienced. Advent hope is about believing what you cannot see, but believing it based on what you do already see, what you have already experienced. We believe the future promised because of those promises already given to us, because of those blessings we can already count in our lives. Like Zechariah in reading from Luke, we know that we are blessed because of what has happened in our lives already. Like Zechariah, we can recite the history of how God has blessed God's people, how God has moved in the world, in the life of Israel, and generations who follow. We can name those things. We can list those promises fulfilled in the life of Israel. Even in our own lives, we can list those ways God has been with us and God has blessed us. Like Zechariah, we see the evidence of God's love all around us. Just look. God is with us. God is everywhere. God has looked favorably on God's people and redeemed them, says Zechariah. Redeemed us, we believe. God has raised up a mighty Savior for us. God has called us to follow, for, and for countless generations, God has blessed us, loved us, protected us, provided for us. God has done all of these things in each of our lives and all of our days. We see the evidence of God's presence and God's love. Count your blessings, name them, all of them aloud. As God's promise, we recognize those good things and good people in our lives as God's promise of even more blessing yet to come. We see the gifts that we already have as promise of gifts that are yet to, yet to be. Advent hope is about recognizing that Jesus Christ has come to save us, that Jesus has already saved us, and that there is still more to come. More blessing, more promise, more light, more joy, more fulfillment, more reconciliation, more, more love. There is more to come. Thanksgiving week, we count our blessings. We name them. We have various activities and ways of trying to remind ourselves of the goodness all around us. Each of those blessings is a reason for hope. Each of those blessings is a reason to believe the promises of God. God has blessed us in the past. God will bless us in the days to come. We are confident in this future God has promised because God always does what God promises. Because God has done it before, we know with certainty God will continue to protect us, to provide for us, to love us, to forgive us, to redeem us with, with never-ending grace. In this season ahead, these four weeks of Advent, we take them as preparation. In this season ahead, hold on to that hope of Jesus Christ. Know that God's promises are true. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves the world. Jesus Christ was born into the world in order to set us free from sin and death and darkness and anything that pulls us away from God. We who believe are invited to follow Jesus in that path of peace, that way of love, to share God's grace in the world and to bring the light of Christ into the darkness of the world. That's what this season of preparation is about. Face whatever comes today, whatever comes tomorrow, knowing that Jesus Christ was born to bring us a new and living hope. And in that hope, we live now and for all eternity by the grace of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. little Advent point just playing to remind me of the wonder of God's grace and God's presence in our lives.
I invite you to remember that, to stand, and to share what you believe using the ancient words of the Apostle Creed that's printed before you. Together, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the life.
uh, friends, family, and even those folks you don't know that might be having challenges this season. Let us pray together. Gracious, merciful God, God of hope, God of light, as this season of Advent begins, remind us again of your presence with us throughout these days. Remind us again of the true meaning of the season. Remind us of your light, your hope, your love, your joy, your peace in Jesus Christ our Savior. Remind us again of your call this season, as always, to share that gift of good news you have given us. To reach out to others sharing the light of hope. Guide us this season, as always, to reach out in the world, showing your compassion, sharing your grace. We hear your promise of peace and transformation, hope and light, and we seek to live into that promise of peace for all, serving the world with justice and mercy. We pray, guide us in sharing your love. Help us this season to reach out to those who are in need, to bring your hope to everyone. We pray now for those who are in our hearts. We pray for those with special needs this day, for the sick, the hospitalized, the homebound, for the hungry, the homeless, the poor, for those who are not able to be with us today, for those who are traveling in this season, for those who are experiencing loss. We pray for first responders and caregivers, for those who are working this holiday, and those who are separated from family because of work. We especially pray for military, firefighters, and law enforcement, and medical workers. We pray for those who care for others, who always rush in to help, keep them safe, help them to know our appreciation and support, let them know that you are with them to protect and to provide. We pray for others that we may not even know about. We pray for those who are on our lists and others who are in our heart. You know our needs far better than we know how to express those needs. Hear us now and answer our prayers. As this Advent season progresses, we know that we will see people in great need. Perhaps even we will be those people who are facing stress this season. We pray for those who are lonely, those who are anxious, those who don't have the money to give as they would like, those who can't provide for their families, those whose families are gone or absent or disconnected. We pray, help us to be the light of God's presence in the world. Help us to live love and give substance to hope. Help us to be peacemakers and pain and breakers. Help us to build bridges of reconciliation and to show others the way to God's grace, God's peace. Gracious God, we pray all this in the name of Jesus, our hope and our light. Jesus, who taught us to pray as we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
given that gift of God's grace that you know Jesus, you know with certainty Jesus lives and lives in and among us. So knowing that, go out and share the hope of Jesus with all the world. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.